beautiful night in New York. Not a cloud in the sky. The temperature was up in the 60s this afternoon. And this is the kind of baseball night that just makes you feel good all over. For the visiting Milwaukee Braves, Tommy Aaron at first leading off. Mike Krasnick will be in left field batting second. If you're scoring, K-R-S-N-I-C-H. Mac Jones will be in right field batting third. Henry Aaron in center field batting cleanup. Frank Bowling will be at second base batting fifth. Del Crandall behind the plate. Dell will hit sixth. Dennis Menke filling in for Eddie Matthews at third base and hitting seventh. The veteran Roy McMillan at shortstop batting eighth. Pitching and batting ninth, right-hander Bob Shaw. For the New York Mets, Jim Hickman in center field to lead off. Felix Mantilla at short batting second. Charlie Neal batting third and playing second. Frank Thomas to hit cleanup and play left field. Gus Bell in right field batting number five. Making his debut for the New York Mets first baseman Marv Thronberry. Marv will hit sixth. Cliff Cook playing his first polo grounds game. Cliff will be at third batting seventh. Sammy Taylor behind the plate batting eighth. Pitching and batting ninth will be right left-hander Al Jackson. And now the playing of our national anthem. We're all set to get underway with the big four-game weekend series between the New York Mets and the Milwaukee Braves. Setting up the New York Mets defensively, Amara Thronberry playing at first. Charlie Neal will be at second. Felix Mantilla at short. And Cliff Cook will be at third. In the outfield, Frank Thomas in left. Jim Hickman in center. Around and right, Gus Bell. On the mound for New York, lefty Al Jackson from Waco, Texas, and behind the plate, Sammy Taylor from Woodruff, South Carolina. Umpiring behind the plate tonight will be the former Pittsburgh Pirate receiver, Benny Smith. Mel Steiner will call the plays around first. The veteran Dusty Bacchus will be at second, and big Stan Landis will be at third. Stepping in to lead off in the ball game will be young Tommy Aaron. Tommy hitting at 250 to add. He's a right-hand batter. He's been used at a number of positions by Bertie Tevis. He's turning into an all-purpose man. Tommy Aaron, who played at Austin last year and hit 299. Right-hand batter Whitty. Al Jackson out of his wind up delivers. Last ball over strike one call. Jackson pitched the beauty of the game his last time out, but lost a tough pitching duel to the Phillies, 2-1. to one. His prior start, he shut out the Phillies, winning 8 to nothing. Infield to the outfield, straight away. Now the pitch to Tommy Aaron. It's off the outside corner. One ball and one strike. Sammy Taylor, a crash behind the plate, setting up the target. Benny Smith looking over the inside shoulder of catcher Taylor. In comes the pitch. Bounding ball slowly hit down to third, charging in Cook. He jumps and throws in time to Mark Thornberry. One away, nobody on. Cliff Cook coming in on the slow roller to throw out Tommy Aaron. And that brings up the veteran minor leaguer, Mike Kresnick. K-R-S-N-I-C-H. Mike Christie playing in left field. Right-hand batter takes, and the pitch is over for a call strike. Now Jackson siding in, winds and pitches. Outside and high, one ball, one strike. Bill Adair on the coaching lines at third with Andy Pafko coaching at first. Now Jackson over the head. Around comes the left arm. Foul tipped. He just barely got a piece of that one. Good slider by Jackson. One ball and two strikes. Jackson, 
Out in front on the number two hitter in the game, Max Krisner. Just off the outside quarter of the counter, even at two balls and two strikes. That one didn't miss by much. Al struck out almost 300 men the last two years in AAA for the Columbus Jets. He helped the Jets to win the International League pennant a year ago. Mike Kresnick played at Louisville last year, batted 276. The pitch to him. Swing and a miss. He struck him out. Ball dropped by Sammy Taylor. Sammy guns the pick down to Mara Thronberry. Two men down. Two up and two set aside by Al Jackson. That'll bring up Mac Jones, the right fielder. Jones hitting at 333. He got off to a slow start, and then he really went into a batting spurt. Left-hand hitter with good running speed. Mets had a good look at Mac Jones during the spring training games. Both at St. Pete and Bradenton. Taken off the outside corner. One ball and no strikes. A doubleheader here at the Polo Grounds tomorrow. The doubleheader gets underway at 1 o'clock. Now the windup pitched by Jackson. A ground ball slowly hit down the first base side. Over to it is Neal. He puts the throne there. The side is out. Charlie Neal running to his left on the slow roller. And he throws out Mac Jones. And Al Jackson gets them in order in the top of the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. The score in the middle of the first, the Braves nothing, and the New York Mets coming to bat. Bob Shaw on the mound for the Milwaukee Braves. Bob with the White Sox and the Kansas City A's last year. Off to a good start with the Milwaukee Braves. Bob has won two, lost one. Started four ball games, appeared in seven altogether. His earned run average, 2.7. He has a lifetime record of 50 and 39. Jim Hickman, right hand batter up to lead off against Shaw, holds up on the breaking ball over, strike one call. well-proportioned right-hand pitcher who has always taken exceptional care of himself. He's one of the best trainers in sports today. Big right-hander from the Bronx, winds and deals. Breaking ball outside and low, one ball and one strike. Last year, Bob won 12 while losing 14, combining the season with the White Sox in Kansas City. 6'2", 195 pounds. Makes his home now in Garden City. One ball, one strike on Jim Hickman. Last half of the first, nobody on, nobody out. Bounced off the plate of foul ball, scooting back toward the Milwaukee dugout. Jim hitting at 282. White Sox won the pennant. It was Bob Shaw winning 18 and losing only six. It was such a big, big factor for them. Now Shaw out of his windup. The one-two pitch is swung and missed. He struck him out. Jim Hickman goes down swinging. Nobody out, and the leading hitter for the New York Mets, Felix Mantilla, steps in. Felix riding an 11 game hitting streak and batting at 324. Felix Mantilla batting right handed. Felix spins from the waist, in comes the pitch, and it's off the outside corner, ball one. After all the bad weather the last couple of days out in Chicago, the New York Mets took advantage of the beautiful weather in New York by getting a lot of extra batting practice starting as early as 4 o'clock this afternoon. Now Shaw over the head, around comes the arm. He looks at a curve, it bends over the outside corner, a call strike, one ball and one strike. Del Crandall moving out toward the mound now for a brief get-together with Bob Shaw. Bob 
Bob Shaw, 28-year-old right-hander from Garden City, Long Island, looking in now to Del Crandall. Infield in the outfield, straight away to Mantilla. Breaking ball off the outside edge, two and one. General manager Johnny McHale of the Milwaukee Braves gave up catcher Jose Askew, third baseman Ed Charles, and outfielder Manny Jimenez in order to get Bob Shaw during last winter's trading. Both Ed Charles and Manny Jimenez are performing extremely well for Kansas City right now, especially Jimenez. The 2-1 delivery, breaking ball over a call strike, and the count is even now, two balls and two strikes. Well, I hope you're planning to be here tomorrow and get a good look at the polo grounds and see the job that is turned in by Johnny McCarthy and his crew on this infield and outfield. The playing field is absolutely beautiful. That's a way for a week. They took advantage of the lull of a week to really make it look even better. Now the 2-2 delivery. Foul tipped into the dirt. No play. The Braves are set up with Tommy Aaron playing first, Frank Bowling at second, Roy McMillan at short, and Dennis Menke is at third. Mike Krisnick in left, Hank Aaron in center, and around and right, Mac Jones. Eddie Matthews and Joe Adcock both sidelined. Matthews with an injury, and Joe Adcock with a very heavy virus. Smash it hard, up the middle of base hit for Felix Mantillo. Hank Aaron fielding the ball in center, whips it back in, and Mantilla quickly extends his consecutive game batting streak. So Felix Mantilla rips one up the middle. He now has hit safely in 12 straight, and it brings up Charlie Neal. Neil Crandall moving out to talk to his pitcher, Bob Shaw. Shaw uses a good fastball, good curveball, and he has a fine change of pace. Warren Spahn will be in action in tomorrow's doubleheader here at the Polo Grounds. The other game, either Jack Curtis or Carl Willey pitches for Milwaukee. And for the New York Mets, Roger Craig and Bob Moorhead. The crowd coming alive now. We're in the last half of inning one. Swing and a miss, strike one. Low fastball in the outside corner that Neal went right after. Charlie's still over 300, batting at 303 with three home runs and 11 runs batted in. Frank Thomas waiting on deck and then Gus Bell. Tommy Aaron moving over now to hold against the base runner, Felix Manvia. Bob Shaw up in pitching position. Turns and fires to first. A low throw taken out of the dirt by Tommy Aaron. Not in time. Breeze blowing in favor of the right-hand batters. Cutting diagonally across the field from first toward third. Whip to first again. Again, not in time. Shaw getting his sign from Del Crandall. One out and one on. Here's the pitch on the way. Breaking ball in the dirt. Charlie Neal laying off of it. One ball and one strike. Tonight the Giants will be in Houston. The Pirates play in Cincinnati. The Phillies beat the Cubs a day game 12 to 2. Jack Hamilton all the way for the win. Dick Ellsworth the loser. Don Demeter had a three run homer in that game. A four run homer. It was a grand slammer. It came in the third. The 1-1 pitch, a pitch out, but nothing was on. Del Crandall called for a pitch out, but the pitch out by Bob Shaw was almost in the dirt. And Del, who had moved out to his right, had to extend his glove back to the other way in order to get the pitch. Two balls and a strike on Charlie Neal. No score. We're in the last half of the first inning. Now Mantilla grabs his leadoff first. There goes Mantilla, hit and run, swing and a miss. Peg going down to second to slide, save, stolen base. Stolen base for Felix Mantilla. Mets had the hit and run play on. Neal failed to connect, and Mantilla 
steals the base ahead of Del Grando's throw. First stolen base of the season for Felix. So he sets himself up in scoring position. The 2-2 delivery is inside of the knees, ball three. A full count, three and two on Charlie Neal. In the American League tonight, the Yankees open a big series at Cleveland around Terry against Mudcat Grant. The Red Sox play at Detroit, the White Sox at Los Angeles, Washington at Baltimore, Stenhouse against Quirk, and Kansas City will be playing the Minnesota Twins in Minneapolis. 3-2 delivery, ball four, it's outside and low, and Neal is on. That brings up Frank Thomas with two men aboard. Enthusiastic crowds here at the Polo Grounds. Fans have been absolutely tremendous. Now Frank Thomas batting. Frank had an 11-game hitting streak scissor in the only game that the weather permitted the Mets and Cubs to play out in Chicago. Frank hitting at 309 with eight home runs and 15 runs batted in. Here's the pitch on the way. Outside and low, Crandall lunging off to his right to handle it. One ball and no strikes. Two runners take a lead. The pitch to Thomas, a change-up curve that's over for a call strike. Bob Shaw really slowed up on that one after giving Thomas a lot of motion. One ball, one strike. Frank standing upright. He's right up on the plate. One man away. Now Shaw turns and walks off the mound for a moment to go to the rousing bag. One ball, one strike to Frank Thomas. Don Nottabart has been given the sign by Bertie Tevis to start cranking up out on the Milwaukee bullpen. Pitching one and one. Curve outside and low. Ball two. Thomas laying off of it and the count goes two and one. Sally Hemus tugging it up on the coaching lines at third and Cookie Lavagetto at first. Mets casting a threat. Last half of the first inning, no score. Mantilla leading off second. Charlie Neal leading off first. One man out. Pitching two and one. Curve is fouled. Twisting back toward the upper deck and out of play. So that's an upper deck souvenir and the count is 2-2 on Frank Thomas. Frank batting against his old teammates. He had 25 home runs playing for Milwaukee last year. He had two with the Cubs before being traded to Milwaukee. by Bob Shaw. The 2-2 pitch. Fastball taken down around the knees and it's ball three. Now let's keep an eye on the runners and see if the Mets drive play. Three and two on Frank Thomas. One down. Good speed on the baselines. Mantilla the runner at second and Charlie Neal at first. Gus Bell crashed in the on-deck circle with Marv Thronberry to follow. Checking with Del Crandall. The runners take a lead, and now Shaw wants time out. He wants Del Crandall to come out. They want to take no chances. They want to be sure they're together. 
another on it, and perhaps to put it on right there. At the end of one inning, Yankees nothing, Cleveland nothing. Ralph Terry pitching for New York. Mudcat Grant on leave is pitching for Cleveland. Washington nothing, Baltimore nothing. Dave Stenhouse for Washington. And Art Quirk, a left-hander, pitching for the Orioles. Those are the only scores that we have in at the moment. The runners lead away to count three and two. Down comes the pitch. Bow, back upstairs, no play. Frank Thomas fouling the ball off back into the upper deck of the Cal stays at three and two. Right-hander Don Nottebark warmed up in the Milwaukee bullpen as Bob Shaw tries to find his way out of a jam here in the last half of the first. No score. Now the stretch by Shaw. The full second stop. The runners hold. The pitch is swung and missed break three. Bob Shaw showing a lot of courage, staying right with it. He fans Frank Thomas, and that brings up Gus Bell. Del Crandall signals to the infield there are two away. Felix Mantilla on second, Charlie Neal on first. This year, Bob Shaw has won two, lost one. 28-year-old right-hander from Garden City, Long Island, who in 59 won 18 and lost only six, in helping the White Sox to a pennant. He takes it outside, one ball and no strikes. Just made quite a play in the outfield and the only game played out in Chicago. He took one right out of the vines. Bell standing close to the plate and up toward the front of the batter's box. Now Shaw makes the stop. Here's the pitch. A line drive caught by the first baseman, Tommy Aranda, retired the side. Bell, who has been in a batting slump, hitting in tough luck on that one, he hit a hard line drive that Tommy Aranda reached up to grab. So the Mets threatened but failed to score in their half of inning number one. No runs, one hit, no errors, two left on. At the end of one, the score here at the Polo Grounds, the Braves nothing and the New York Mets nothing. Henry Aaron to lead off in the top of the second. Stride. He's hitting at 258. Inside and low, it's ball one. He was in a real tough batting slump, but he came out of it in Philadelphia. A ball game in which he had two homers, a triple, and a double. Hank has hit four home runs, knocked 11 runs in. Jackson winding. Here's the pitch to him. Fast ball in the outside corner. A strike. One ball and one strike. Pitch to Aaron. Breaking ball taken inside and low. Two balls and a strike. Hank, an outfielder. His younger brother Tommy is an infielder. 2 1 delivery. Bounding ball slowly hit down a third. Tough chance for Cook. Here's the peg. Not in time. He's on with a leg hit. Hank Aaron, who can fly. Took the big swing, tapped it slowly down the third baseline, and he beats it out. Now the batter is Frank Bowling, the second baseman. Frank came over to Milwaukee in a swap with Detroit in which Bruton went to the Tigers and he was the National League All-Star second baseman last year. He looks at a curve, it's low, one ball and no strikes. Frank Bully, slender right-hand hitter, fine, fine ball player. Last year he hit 262. Now Jackson off the stretch, 
Takes the ball over to Mara Thronberry, not in time. Aaron practically standing right on the base. Up, twisting toward the crowd beyond first. It'll be out of play. One ball, one strike on Frank Bowling. Top half of the second here at the Polo Grounds. The on deck batter for the Milwaukee Braves is the veteran Del Crandall. Shoulder injury kept Del out almost all of last year, but he's on his way to making a good comeback. Now throw to first, not in time. jump back and take this one inside down around the knees. Three balls and one strike. Three and one to Frank Bowling. Frank's older brother, Milt Bowling, is now an executive in the front office with the Boston Red Sox. Thronberry holds against Aaron. Jackson behind on the count. Deals three and one. A ground ball hit hard over the bag. A base hit. Right down the left field line, rolling now into the corner. Aaron's on his way to third. Bowling will hold with a single. Runners on first and third. Frank Bowling hit a hard grounder right over the bag, just fair by about a foot, and then down to the corner. Frank Thomas getting over there to grab the carom in time to hold Aaron at third and hold Bowling to a single. So now the Braves, with nobody out, have runners on first and third, and Del Crandall coming up. Del hitting at 333, has been up 45 times, collected 15 base hits. Now the New York Mets have the infield looking for two. They're willing to concede a run to try and get two. In comes the pitch. Outside and low, it's ball one to Dell. Del Crandall, out almost all of last year, coming back to reclaim his job from young Joe Torrey, who said that did such a fine job with the Braves after he was called up to fill the boy. Next pitch to him, outside and low, he lays off of it. It's two balls and no strikes. Del Crandall, 11-year veteran with a lifetime big league average of 257. Very heady ball player, good defensive player, and a good offensive threat. Jackson behind the hitter, 2-0, and pitches now to Crandall. Ball three, it's inside and low, and he's on the verge of some mighty serious trouble. Little Al Jackson, who was born on Christmas Day 27 years ago, has one win and two losses. He lost a tough one his last start against the Phillies, losing 2-1. to one. Pitching 3-0. and oh. He went after it, a swing and a miss. Low breaking ball on 3-0. and oh. Del Crandall trying to hit it up the stairs, but failed to get it, and the count is 3-1. and one. Dennis Pinky, the third baseman, will be hitting next. the corners. Down comes the pitch. There goes the runner towards second swing and a foul tip out of play. Frank Bowling was running on three and one. He broke for second base, but the ball is fouled off by Del Crandall, and now we have a full count of three and two. Back into fair territory. 
Foul ball slammed to the opposite field up against the facing of the roof. So the count is three and two on Del Crandall. Position. 
delivers a slatter swung and missed one ball, one strike. One and one on Bob Shaw. Bob hitting right-handed. Roy McMillan leading off second, one man away. Next pitch by Jackson, a swing and a miss, one and two. Doubleheader tomorrow between the Mets and the Braves. First game starting at one o'clock. Single day game on Sunday afternoon to conclude the four game series. Pitching one and two. He struck him out swinging. Second strikeout for Jackson. He got Mike Christie, the left fielder, in the first inning. Milwaukee, three runs on four hits. Here in the top of the second, and now the leadoff batter, Tommy Aaron, is up. Tommy, just 22 years old. He won't be 23 until August. Mobile, Alabama, bats him right-handed. Pitch on the way, bounced foul. That one hit him on the leg. Tommy Taylor flipping the ball to play down Benny Smith. Benny looking at it, decides to put it out of play. Bill Adair, who was a mighty successful minor league manager and now on the coaching staff of the Milwaukee Braves, is coaching at third. Andy Papko is on the Lions at first. Tommy Aaron waiting. Down comes the pitch to him. Inside and low. Taylor had to dig it out. One ball, one strike. Tommy was thrown out by Cliff Cook in the first inning. Tommy hitting at 255. Three runs are in. Jackson trying to get the Braves out as he faces Tommy Aaron. Mets had a threat in their half of the first inning. They had Shaw in trouble with runners on first and second one down. But he pitched down to the jam. Swing and a miss on a breaking ball thrown by Al Jackson. Tommy Aaron really gave that one a big swing. Dennis Minky, 
Gray, a third sacker, makes the catch and foul ground for the out. One away and nobody on. Thronberry was one of those who was mighty anxious to get some extra batting practice this afternoon. He hadn't had a bat in his hands in about a week. Now here's young Cliff Cook. Strong third baseman who was the most valuable player in the American Association playing with Indianapolis last year. Bob Shaw winds the pitch thrown. Fastball over a call strike. The end of two and a half innings in Cleveland. Yankees nothing, Cleveland nothing. Ralph Terry for New York and Mudcat Grant pitching for Cleveland. Check swing, and the pitch is taken. One ball, one strike. It's Cliff Cook, mighty powerful young man. He had 32 home runs last year. He's hit a lot of home runs in the minor league. He had one hit, and that one hit helped to win the game from the Chicago Cubs out of Wrigley Field in his first game as a member of the Mets. A high fly, well hit to left center field. Back goes Henry Era. This is way, way out there, and it's dropped by him on the warning path. Jackson, 
Coming up to hit him in a different way, a fellow who hit a lot of them when he was on the playing field, Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob Murphy. Well, we saw a big one by Cliff Cook. That ball was hit about as far as you can hit it. All set to go at the top of the third. Mike Kresnitz in the batter's box, a right-handed batter. And Al Jackson's first pitch of fastball. It's outside, ball one. Mike struck out swinging in his first game, first time at bat here in the polo grounds. So he's 0 for 1. Stands deep in the box. And the next pitch by Jackson is taken inside, ball two. Two balls and no strikes. The Braves with three runs on four hits in the top of the second. Lead the New York Mets, who picked up their only run in the game in the bottom half of the second. It's a three-to-one ball game, the Milwaukee Braves. Now the left-handed pitcher back to the batter, and he hits a ground ball. Good play by Jackson as he hauls it down. Goes over to first base to get his man. Now Jackson taking the ball as he came off the mound, high in the air. And Mike Gresnitz is down for the first out in the top of the third. That will bring up Mac Jones, the left-handed batter. Mac 0 for 1 in the ball game, grounded out to second base. Tall left-handed batter. He started the ball game with a 333 average. He has four home runs, 13 runs batted in. And the first pitch to him by Al Jackson, just below the knees, ball one. Umpire behind home plate, Vinny Smith, the next catcher, and he shakes his head when Sammy Taylor asked him if the ball was high enough. Well, Vinny was a great catcher in the major leagues. He certainly ought to be able to see him. He's seen plenty come through. The one hole pitch to Mac Jones hit sharply right through the middle in the center field of base hit. So Mac Jones rounds at first base and holds there as Jim Hickman throws in and he gets his first base hit in the polo ground. A man on first base and one out to score a three to one Milwaukee. That'll bring up Hank Aaron who started off the second inning with a dribbler down the third baseline that he beat out for a base hit. And that was the start of the rally for the Milwaukee Braves, in which they picked up their three runs. Hank Aaron, a right-handed batter. Al Jackson checking his runner at first, comes to the plate with a slider that's a called strike in the outside corner about knee high. Aaron off to a slow start this year, batting 258 at the start of the ball game. He does have four home runs. Jackson back to the plate. The pitch is popped up in the air in foul territory. Sammy Tanner coming over by the dugout. Calls and makes a catch and almost runs into Throwberry. Then he cuts over towards first base as Mac Jones holds there. Nice running catch by Sammy Tanner for out number two. There's an awful lot of room to roll back of home plate. Tanner had a long way to go to run that one down. Milwaukee Braves with two men down. A runner at first base. The batter stepping in the batter's box. Frank Bowling. Bowling singled at Hank Aaron singled in the second inning. Then later scored one of the three runs scored by the Milwaukee Braves. Now Jackson with his first pitch to Bowling. Inside. Corner strike one call. Bowling started the ball game at 273. Right-handed batter with a slightly open stance. Now Jackson back to the plate. Curveball pulled foul down the third baseline. Strike two. Jackson pulling the string and the curveball had bowling pulled. He was out in front and pulled the ball foul down the third base side. Braves lead by two. It's a 3-1 game as Jackson looks for the two-strike sign. At first base, Mac Jones holding there. The pitch is high. Ball one. One ball, two strikes. Now back to the plate. Jones goes. The ball is hit slowly down the third base side. Jackson over slips as he fields the ball and doesn't make a throw. He had no chance to get his man. And moving down to second base with 
No interference, Mac Jones. So now runners at first and second with two men down. And a batter coming in the batter's box will be Del Crandall. Crandall doubles right down the right field line to drive in two runs his first time up. Two of the three scored by the Milwaukee Braves. The Mets have one. That's it, number six off Al Jackson. Crandall, a right-handed batter who missed most of all of the 1961 season because of an injury. In the batter's box, a right-handed batter standing deep in the box. First pitch to him, fouled away, strike one. Third base coach, Jim Adair, throwing the ball away. At first base, a familiar name, familiar player, Andy Hapgall, still wearing his famous number 48. Andy Papko, who played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, but mainly for the Chicago Cubs. A one-strike pitch set up now to Del Crandall, but a play being put on at second, but not coming off as Jackson does not throw when Neal goes over to move the runner back at second. Raised with runners at first and second base and two outs. Next pitch to Crandall is low, ball one. last year played in only 15 ball games so he missed quite a few back in action in the National League Jackson stepping off the mound moves both runners back to their bases but no play taken Cleveland with three runs in the bottom of the third inning now lead the Yankees after they have been out in the top of the fourth three to nothing Jackson's one two pitch foul tip back in the glove one ball, two strikes. Ralph Jerry going for the Yankees in that ball game against Jim Mudcat Grant. Only scores in so far in American League play. Right here, it's three to one in favor of the Braves, top of the third. Jackson with a one-two count. Now set and back to Del Crandall. He swings and fouls it off to the left, and the count will hold at one ball and two strikes. set and the pitch back to him again is fouled away so the pitch will go as a strike and the count will hold at one ball and two strikes Mac Jones out at second base at first base Frank Bowling two men out to score three to one Milwaukee now Jackson set and to the plate Popped away foul. So Crandall staying alive for the third time. Keeps the count at one and two. Marv Thronberry at first base for the New York Mets. A recent acquisition by President George Weiss. At second base, Charlie Neal. At shortstop, Phoenix Mantee at third base, Cliff Cook. That's your infield playing straight away against Del Crandall. Outfield, Thomas in left. Hickman in center. Bell and right. Now the one-two pitch by Al Jackson. Randall swings and fouls it down in the dirt. So again a foul ball. Again the count one and two. Sammy Taylor the catcher for the New York Mets. In order to make room for Marv Thronberry, the roster has to be a 25 man. Bob Miller, who was acquired, was optioned to Syracuse. the Mets stand at 25 men now and Thronberry is in the ball game now Al Jackson back to Del Crandall down in the dirt a nice stop by Sammy Taylor ball two Taylor keeping the runners at first and second base Al Jackson calling time asks for a new ball gets it from Benny Smith the home plate umpire Two balls, 
balls and two strikes. 3-1 game in favor of the Braves. Two men out, runners at first and second base. Now Jackson with a 2-2 pitch. Hit on the ground, deep in the hole. The shortstop can't get to it. It goes through. And coming here from second base, Mac Jones. Throw cut off by Cliff Cook and holding at second base, Frank Bowley. So the score now 4-1 as Mac Jones scores from second base and Del Crandall gets his second hit of the game and that's his third run batted in. with two men out. And now Jackson now getting set the pitch to Dennis Menke. Milwaukee with seven base hits. Menke, 0 for 1, popped up to second base. A right-handed batter. The first pitch to him is outside, ball one. Menke batting 194 at the start of the ball game. year about at 293 for Vancouver in the Pacific Coast Lake. 1-0 pitch is foul tip back in the catcher's glove as Menke started the swing then held up and couldn't do much with it. So the count one ball, one strike. Runners at first and second and two outs as Jackson comes back to Dennis Menke with a slow curve. It's fouled off the glove of Sammy Taylor. The count, one ball, two strikes. Jackson worked the first inning, one, two, three, and then Milwaukee picked up three runs in the second, have added one more here in the top of the third. Jackson now into the stretch and back to the plate. And it's a curveball. It's down the dirt. And again, Sammy Taylor blocks the ball out in front of him, holding the runners at first and second. Two balls, two strikes. Wind blowing out to left field. Good hitter's night. Now the 2-2 pitch. Down low, ball three. So the count goes all the way down the line. Three balls and two strikes. Two men out. The runners will be going on the next pitch. Al Jackson looking for the side. Steps on the mound. Goes into the stretch. The runners go. The pitch comes to the plate. A bouncing ball hit down towards third. But going foul as Cliff Cook comes up with the ball. So... We'll have the scene all over again. Going back to second base, Frank Bowling. Going back to first base, Dill Crandall. And coming back in the batter's box after running all the way down to first base, the batter, Dennis Menke. Menke playing at third base for Milwaukee. Playing his first game in the polo grounds and now all set on the 3-2 count. The on-deck batter, Roy McMillan, the shortstop. Jackson checking the runner at second base. Now to the plate as the runners go. A swing, a foul tip back in the glove, strike three. So Al Jackson picked up his third strikeout, a big one to retire the side. And in the inning for the Milwaukee Braves, one run on three hits. There were no errors by the New York Mets, and two men were left on base. And the score now at the end of two and one half innings of play. The Milwaukee Braves four, the New York Mets one. <laughs> Moving along to the bottom half of the third inning and coming in to bat for the second time in the ball game, the leadoff man for the New York Mets as they trail four to one, Jim Hickman. Hickman struck out. As the leadoff man for the Mets, so he is all for one. Came on with a 282 average. Right handed batter. And on the mound, getting set to go, Bob Shaw. His first pitch, a strike call, the fastball through. Shaw, working through the two innings, has given up one run. That came when Cliff Cook tripled the left field and scored in a sacrifice fly by Sammy Taylor. He 
He's allowed only two hits. He struck out two, and he's walked one. Now the one-strike pitch to Jim Hickman. A slider that's out off the outside corner. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Shaw has gone the route twice to win two ball games. Went all the way against L.A. and all the way against Houston. Back to the plate, a drive to left field. This one will go all the way. And there we go. Hickman with his fourth home run of the year. And the score now, four to two, as the New York Mets pick up a run with no one out here in the bottom half of the third. That ball was off of the facade of the roof area, down the left field line, right above the 310 mark. There was no doubt about it. Jim Hickman, home run number four in his major league career. And now coming into the batter's box, Phoenix Mantia. And Phoenix is a single going for him. That was his base hit for the 12th straight game. Mantia came on at 324. Right-handed batter against Bob Shaw. Shaw's first pitch, a slider on the outside corner, strike one call. Bob Shaw on the mound goes into the windup, and the one strike pitch to Mantia. Let up, it's popped up. On the right hand side, coming over from second base, Frank Foley, he calls and makes a catch. So Mantia is down for out number one, and Charlie Neal comes in. Well, Jim Hickman didn't have a chance yesterday to celebrate his 25th birthday. So he had to hold it over one day to pick up a home run. Here a day after. It's a 4-2 game, Milwaukee. And the New York Mets batting in the bottom of the first of the third inning. The score getting closer as Hickman hit a home run. There's the next pitch to Charlie Neal outside a ball. While we have time, let's pause for station identification. This is the General Electric Station, WGY 810 on your dial, Schenectady. Temperature 56. The next pitch to Charlie Neal is fouled away. Go to count now. One ball, one strike. Ball bouncing off the roof down into the lower deck area, giving the fans a chance to scramble, but then bouncing away. Charlie Neal with a walk in his only appearance here tonight, batting 303. Bob Shaw back inside. Ball two. Two balls and one strike. Set to go. Bob Shaw on the mound. And the 2 1 pitch. Fastball is fouled back over the top of the roof. Now bouncing down the crowd. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Comes back in the 2 2 pitch, a broken bat, the ball hit on the ground down the third base, up with it over to first base in time. Then it's Menke. That bat just broke right in half and splintered with a piece of it going all the way out to the third base area, just short of the grass. So two men down as Charlie Neal goes out, and Frank Thomas comes up to bat. the second strikeout victim of Bob Shaw when he struck out his first time up in the first inning. Shaw getting Hickman and Frank Thomas in that inning for his only two strikeouts. He's given up two runs on three hits. Walk one batter. A let up to Thomas. Paul fouled on the left field line. That ball hit very hard, but pulled down too far to the left. 
Strike one on Frank Thomas. Frank came in the ball game with a 3.09 average. He has eight home runs and leads the club in that department. Also, he has the club leadership and runs batted in with 15. A one-strike pitch to Thomas. A slider just outside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. Two game, Milwaukee, bottom of the third inning. Mets have scored both their runs and long hits. Shaw back with a high hanging curveball, ball two. Two balls and one strike. Shaw trying to change up with the curve, left it up too high. First run scored by the Mets as a result of a long, long triple to the left field. And a sacrifice fly. The other one is the result of Hickman's home run. Now Shaw with his 2-1 pitch. A slider outside, ball three. So Bob Shaw to Frank Thomas, 3-1 and one with two men out. The on-deck batter, Gus Bell. Shaw makes his home in Garden City, New York. The 3-1 pitch to Thomas. Call strike two. Slider catching on the outside corner. So Thomas and Shaw all the way out. Three balls and two strikes. Now time called as a ball is being picked up out in front of home plate by Dale Crandall. A little rubber ball. Frank Thomas, three and two. Standing right on top of the plate. Waiting for Shaw to get his side. Shaw takes plenty of time. Takes off the side. Then goes into the pump. And the 3-2 pitch. Popped up in the air. Third baseman Dennis Menke right on the back. Makes the catch in fair territory. And that retires the side. In the inning for the New York Mets, they pick up one run on a home run by Jim Hickman. That was the only hit in the inning. There were no errors by the Milwaukee Braves, and no one left on. And the score at the end, the three complete. The Milwaukee Braves, four. The New York Mets, two. And right here, Al Jackson set to go, and his first pitch is a called strike as he works to Roy McMillan. Score the ball game, four to two in favor of Milwaukee. McMillan has a base hit so far in the game and two runs batted in. He takes down low, ball one. One ball, one strike. Jackson working the top of the fourth has given up four runs on seven hits. A change of pace outside, ball two. Two balls, one strike. and two strikes on Roy McMillan. McMillan batting 217. And now the left-handed pitcher back to the right-handed batter inside ball three. Three balls and two strikes as Roy McMillan leads off in the top of the fourth inning for the Milwaukee Braves. John deck batter, the pitcher Bob Shaw. And now the 3 2 pitch to McMillan. Hard ground ball right off to the back, bouncing over the third baseman's head. Now Cook chasing it down the line, picks it up and holds the runner at first base. That ball was a line shot that hit the bag and bounced up. Cook would not have made a play on the ball if it had not hit the bag. And McMillan gets his second straight hit. He's at first base, and the batter now coming up is Bob Shaw. Hit number eight given up by Al Jackson. And Shaw now in the batter's box with Cook at third base. And Thromberry at first looking for a possible punt. Shaw right in batter. Pitch to him is high and outside as Shaw squares around the bun and takes. Ball one. 
Jackson's last two starts were good ones. He shut out the Phillies back on April 29th. That was eight hitter. Then he lost to the Phillies in a 2-1 game. There's his next pitch, and it's outside ball two as Shaw again goes to bunt and takes. Two balls and two strikes. Al Jackson, the pitcher. Jackson has a lifetime major league record of two wins and three losses. He has no record against the Braves. The next pitch is fouled away as Shaw tries to bunt. Strike one. Roy McMillan at first base. No one out, top of the fourth with Milwaukee leading, four to two. Now the left-hander back to the plate. Shaw bunts foul again, strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Bob Shaw with a batting average of 167 at the start of the game. Now looking down for the sign, whether or not he'll be bunting here or hitting away depends on what manager Bertie Tippett sends to the third base coach. Jimmy Adair. Cook at third, moving back a little bit. And here's the pitch, a square on the bunt, but shot takes, and it's outside, ball three. So Al Jackson now, three and two to his second man in this inning. And we'll see exactly how Milwaukee will play it. There's no one out in the top of the fourth inning to run at first. Balls and two strikes, and Jackson to the plate. The runner does not go. The bunt is bunted foul, and Shaw's out. That'll go as a strikeout for Al Jackson to put out for the catcher. And now one man out, and the batter coming up. The leadoff man from Milwaukee, Tommy Aaron. Strikeout number four for Al Jackson as Tommy Aaron steps in. He is 0 for 2. batter grounded out to third a good play by Cliff Cook and then he also grounded out to first base he came on with a 259 average Al Jackson with his first pitch it's popped up in the air but going foul no play on it strike one Tommy Aaron the brother of Hank Aaron playing in this ball game at first base he's an infielder primarily a second baseman. Now the left-hander back to the right-handed batter. A hard ground ball over to Neal. He picks it up, throws with the shortstop covering the return throw to first base, not in time. So the first part picked up as Neal made a fine throw and a pivot to Felix Mantilla to force at second base. Roy McMillan, two men out, and exchanging at first base, Tommy Aaron. And the batter coming in the batter's box, Mike Bresnitz. Resnitz, your right-handed batter. 0 for 2. He has struck out, and he was retired on a good play by Jackson when he grounded back to the mound. He takes outside as Jackson throws a fastball. Ball one. Four two game. Milwaukee leading. Top of the fourth inning. Jackson looking at his runner comes to the plate outside and low ball two. Tommy Aaron, a fast man, he could go at any time. Two balls, no strikes. Two and out. Braves leading by two runs. Presnitz looks a little like Joe Edcock as he stands in the batter's box. 2 0 pitch, a change up, gets the plate, knee high, strike one. Fine pitch by Al Jackson as he pulls the string in a slow curve. Two balls and one strike. 
as Jackson sets on the mound. And comes to the plate. Fastball is fouled down in the dirt. Strike two. So the count going to two and two on Mike Bresnich. Braves scored three runs in the second inning. They're half of the second. Added one more in the third. Mets picked up a solo run in the second, a solo run in the third. Tommy Aaron at first base with a good size lead. Jackson to the plate, the 2-2 pitch, hit deep to right center field. Running over to the left, Jim Hickman, but Gus Bell is there, and he makes the catch. Gus Bell retiring the side as he rolls down the long fly ball to right center field. And in the inning for the Milwaukee Braves, no runs on one hit. There were no men errors, and one man was left on. The score at the end, a three-and-one-half inning to play. The Milwaukee Braves, four... The New York Mets, two. That's right, and the score here, four to two. In favor of Milwaukee as the Mets come to bat in the bottom half of the fourth. Then Gus Bell will be the leadoff man. Gus lined out the first base. He's 0 for 1. A left-handed batter against Bob Shaw. And Shaw's first pitch, a fastball to catch it on the outside corner. Strike one call. This is Bob Shaw's fifth starting appearance and his eighth appearance of the season. Big fellow acquired from the Kansas City Athletics. One strike pitch popped up in the air. The shortstop McMillan and the second baseman converging. McMillan calls and makes a catch. Joe Bell is down as the leading man in the fourth inning for the New York Mets with the score four to two against them. And coming up to bat for the second time as a New York Met, Marv Thromberry. He popped up to the third baseman in foul territory. Thromberry, a left-handed batter, takes low ball one. Tomorrow, the New York Mets will be playing the Milwaukee Braves in a doubleheader, and that will be a one o'clock starting time. One o'clock tomorrow, a two-gamer against the Milwaukee Braves. Sunday, a single game, starting at 2 o'clock. Now Shaw back to Marv Thronberry. A foul ball, bouncing off of the plate and going back to the catcher. Strike one. One ball and one strike. Thronberry has great power. Stands in the batter's box. A la Mickey Mantle stands. The 1-1 one, one pitch by Big Bob. Just outside, ball two. Two balls and one strike. Last year, Bob Shaw started the season with the Chicago White Sox. And he was traded over to Kansas City and then last winter moved to Milwaukee. Shaw back with a 2-1 pitch to Thronberry. Outside, ball three. Four to two game, Milwaukee, bottom half of the floor. The on deck batter, Cliff Cook. Shaw into the windup, and the 3 1 pitch is on its way. Taken, called strike two. So now, Thornberry, three balls and two strikes against Bob Shaw. One man down. As the Mets need two to tie. A 3-2 pitch. Foul back in the screen. So the count will stay at three balls, two strikes. Thronberry looking for his first Major League base hit of the 1962 season. Now Shaw back to the left-handed batter. Outside, ball four. Shaw walks his second man and puts Thronberry at first base and brings up Cliff Cook. Cook got his first bowler base hit, and it was a big one. 
in the second inning when he tripled to the deepest part of the ballpark in left center field. He later scored when Sammy Taylor hit a sacrifice fly to left field. He scored the first run of the game by the Mets. The other run scored in a home run by Hickman. So here is Cliff Crush. And his first pitch is a curveball down around the knees right in the outside corner. Shaw throws a big overhand curveball. Also a good slider. That's probably his best pitch. And a fastball that moves in on a right-handed batter. Cook came in this ball game with one hit and four times up for the season. Fastball, it's up inside, but a little bit too far inside. Ball one. One ball, one strike. So with Cook's triple, he now has two hits and five times up. He's batting 400 for the Mets. Cleveland out in the bottom half of the fifth. The Yanks out in the top of the sixth. And the score of that game still 3-0 Cleveland. Daly is pitching in place of Cherry for the New York Yanks. Inside, ball two. Two balls and a strike. At the end of five, Washington Baltimore. Senators leading one to nothing. Two and one to Cliff Cook. A curveball, strike two. Then house pitching for the Senators in that ball game. Mark Burt pitching for the Baltimore Orioles. Bob Shaw with a 2 2 pitch, a sidearm, slider that hangs high, ball three. So the count now all the way out, three balls and two strikes to Cliff Cook with a runner at first base. Boston to Detroit, out in the top of the second, no score in that ball game. Squall going for the Red Sox. Boychak for the Tigers, a throw at first base, but Broberry back easily. So Shaw now working with a 3-2 count. A runner at first base. One man out to score 4-2 in his favor. And here's the pitch. Outside, ball four. That moves Kroenberg on the second base. It's Cliff Cook. A walk and he's at first base. That's walk number three. Two in a row by Bob Shaw. And brings up Sammy Taylor. Sacrifice fly to left field. He has a run battered in. Batting 200. And now that brings action to the bullpen for the Milwaukee Braves. Don Nottabart up and going for the second time. He was up in the first inning when the Mets threatened in that inning. And Sammy Taylor, left-handed batter. First pitch to him in the dirt. Picked up by Del Crandall. Ball one. And that'll bring out 37. Potentially for the New York Mets to go ahead run in the form of Sammy Taylor, the batter. Now Bertie Jevitz, the former Major League catcher, back to the dugout. And Shaw now looking for the sign to pitch to Sammy Taylor with the count one ball and no strike. And the pitch hit on the ground of the second base with a chance for two. Over to second base in time. The first base in time, a double play. So Shaw, after a brief talk with Bernie Jevitz, throws up a double play, and that retires the side. In the inning for the New York Mets, no runs, no hits, no errors, two walks, and one man left on base in the score at the end of four. The Milwaukee Braves four, the New York Mets, too. And once again, bringing back to the microphone, Bob Murphy. Thank you very much, Ralph. And while the teams are changing sides, let's check our scoreboard. 
San Francisco at Houston, not as yet underway. At the end of three, Pirates and Cincinnati no score. Al McBean against the Reds, Joey J. The Phillies in a day game beat the Cubs 12-2. Hamilton the winner, Ellsworth the loser. Demeter a grand slammer. Tonight at the end of one, Dodgers nothing, Cardinals nothing. Stan Williams against the Redbirds, Ray Sadecki. In the American League at the end of five and a half. Cleveland three, the Yankees nothing. Budcat Grant for Cleveland. Buddy Daly on to relieve Ralph Terry in the sixth inning. Red Sox nothing, Detroit nothing at the end of an inning and a half. Don Swall against Paul Foytak. The White Sox play on the West Coast against the Los Angeles Angels. At the end of five, Dave Stenhouse, who pitched a strong game against the Yankees in his last outing, has the Orioles shut out for five with Washington in front, one to nothing. On the mound for the Orioles is lefty Art Quirk. Kansas City will be at Minnesota. In the fifth inning, the Milwaukee Braves will have the heart of their batting order coming up against lefty Al Jackson. Mac Jones, the right fielder, left-hand hitter, leading it off. Jones, one hit and two times up. Looks at a fastball, and it's through there for a call, strike one. Side down around the knees, ball two, two and one. He had one of those great springs. He got off to a tremendous start, hit about five home runs the first ten days down south. Braves had him up for a good look last year. The two one pitch, swing and a miss, and the count is even. He really gave that one a ripple. Henry Aaron on deck, and then Frank Bowling. Doubleheader tomorrow, getting underway at 1 o'clock. Jackson pitching 2-2. Two and two. It's low, ball 3. Although Al hasn't been walking any hitters, his control has not been as sharp tonight as his in the last two outings. And he's gone 3-2 and two on a number of hitters. Here's the payoff pitch, fouled back upstairs to the upper deck, and the count stays at 3-2. and two. Full count, three and two on Mac Jones. Batting out of an overly close stance. Back foot near the restraining line. Holds the bat high and away from his head. Now the pitch. Inside and low, it's ball four, and Jones walks, leading off the fifth inning. So there is the first walk, surrendered by Al Jackson. And it brings up Henry Aaron. Hank has one hit and two times up. Hello, Hank is built along slender lines. He has that wonderful power, and he's one of the most durable players in baseball. He lays off of it. Good bat control as he checked up after starting. One ball and no strikes. led the National League in total bases last year. He's led the circuit three years in a row. Thrown to first. Not in time. He doesn't come close to having the size of some of the big sluggers in baseball. But nonetheless, he's led the circuit in total bases five times in three years in a row. A high fly ball hits the right field. It's carrying deep. Bell has a long way to go. On the warning path, he's under it. Grabs it for the out. Aaron flies to right. That ball was high enough to give Gus time to get over there, not too far from the corner, and on the warning pass. Right here before Frank Bowling steps in, we'll step out for station identification. The time. 810 on your radio dial. This is WGY Schenectady. Four to two, Milwaukee in front. Now Jackson checks his runner, then pitches. Breaking ball over at the knees for a call strike. Frank Bowling didn't think so, and he steps out of there to talk to umpire Benny Smith about it. Benny, who played his major league ball at Pittsburgh, makes his home in Pittsburgh the year round. Mac Jones. 
Jones leading off first, one man down. Outside and high, he teased him, tried to get him to go for a bad ball. One ball and two strikes. Doubleheader tomorrow, starting at one. Single day game on Sunday. So why not take uh, Mom out to a nice brunch around noon and then come on to the polo grounds for a nice, pleasant Sunday afternoon. Ground ball hit hard. Down to third, booted by Cliff Cook. Over into foul ground. He has no play now. And the Braves have two men on. The ball was hit hard, but Cliff Cook was in front of it. Caromed off of the body of Cliff Cook and over into foul territory. We'll wait for the official scoring. Now the Braves have runners on first and second. That'll be a base hit. Ball was hit hard by Frank Boley. So that gives the National League's all-star second baseman his third straight hit in the game. He's three for three. Batter is Dell Crandall. Dell has a double, driving in a run, and a single, driving in a run. So the veteran Dell Crandall, 11-year veteran, he is two for two and two RBIs. A strike at the knees. Braves have had at least one hit in every inning of the game with the exception of the first. They now have a total of four runs on nine hits. The Mets have been held to three hits, but they've had the long hits going for them. A booming triple by Cliff Cook and a home run by Jim Hickman. Mantilla, a stride toward the hole, set up a double play depth, and Charlie Neal shaded a bit toward second. The outfield deep with Hickman swung toward left center. Now Jackson, glove on the knee, looks in to get his sign from Sammy Taylor. Mac Jones leading off second, Frank bowling off first. And the pitch. A ground ball hit down to Cook. He's up. He throws to Neal. There's one. Neal to throw there. He's double play. Two and one. 
He's been jumping on that first pitch quite a bit of late, and he also banged the ball to the opposite field. Rogers Hornsby has worked with a number of the Mets to try and get them to go with the pitch and hit that outside pitch to the opposite field. Low and outside is ball three, three and one on Jim Hickman. New York trailing four to two. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. Here's the wind up pitch on the way. Swing and a miss. He went after a fastball that was worn down the middle. And the string is out three and two on Jim Hickman. Down three and two as Bob Shaw checks in with Del Crandall. Pitching three and two. Foul ball. He hit a curve down the third baseline, but was too far out in front. Milwaukee, four runs on nine hits, no errors. The Mets, two runs on three hits, no errors. up the three two delivery ball four he missed the outside corner he threw him a breaking ball on three and two that is the fourth walk given up by Shaw and it brings up Felix Mantilla Felix Felix didn't waste a moment extending his consecutive game batting streak he singled sharply to center field in the first inning and he's now hit safely at 12 straight Felix leads the Mets in batting hitting at 329 He holds up, but it's a strike on the outside corner. Now Jim Hickman leading off first base. Tommy Aaron holds against him. And the pitch on the way is inside at the belt. One ball and one strike. Beautiful night for the ball game, and we have a good and an enthusiastic crowd. Big doubleheader tomorrow that starts at 1 o'clock. And on Mother's Day, this Sunday, a single game. Monday open, the Cubs are in Tuesday night and Wednesday. Pitching. Bounced off his foot. Ball rolls back to the mound, but it's a foul ball because it came right off his foot. One ball and two strikes. Following the six games with Milwaukee and the Cubs, four with the Braves, two with the Cubs, the New York Mets will make their first lengthy road trip of the season. They will start the trip in Milwaukee, then go to Houston, from Houston to Los Angeles, Los Angeles to San Francisco, and then back home. Breaking ball taken across the letters, and it's two and two on Felix Manfia. They come back home from that next trip winding up on the west coast of San Francisco, then they return home for the big dates. The Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants starting with that Decoration Day doubleheader. Bob Shaw makes the one-second stop. Pitches two and two. A broken bat grounder hits down the third. Minky up, throws the second for one, on to first, double play. Brave infield taking off another fast double play. This one started by the third baseman, Dennis Finke. They've turned two and two innings now to back up the pitching of Bob Shaw. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. Five innings complete. The score here at the Polo Grounds, the Milwaukee Braves four and the New York Mets two. Two games tomorrow, one on Sunday for the Milwaukee Series. The Cubs in Tuesday night and Wednesday. Doubleheader tomorrow as a one o'clock start. Keep uh, mentioning that a number of times throughout the broadcast tonight because of the fact that in the very beginning it was not that starting time. Here's the windup and the pitch. A swing and a miss, strike one to Dennis Menke. Young Dennis Menke, M-E-N-K-E, right-handed batting third baseman, filling in for the injured Eddie Matthews. 
Had a good year in Triple A on the Coast League in the Coast League last year at Vancouver. Jackson's breaking pitches inside and low. One ball, one strike. In the sixth inning at Baltimore, the Washington Senators scored 11 runs. They now lead the Orioles 12 to nothing. A high pop foul over toward the field box. Cronberry takes a look in, but sees it's out of his reach. And the count goes 2-2 on Dennis Benke. Art Quirk was knocked out of the box. West Stock came in, and finally Skinny Brown. And when it was all over, Mickey Vernon's Washington Senators had 11 runs. So at the end of five and a half, the Senators lead the Orioles 12 to nothing. The last half of the sixth inning has been out a long time at Cleveland. Blazer right in there, calls strike three. Dennis Menke called out on strikes. And that's five strikeouts in the game for Al Jackson. Pittsburgh and Cincinnati, no score at the end of four and a half. They've gone halfway now on a mound duel between Al McBean and Joey Jay. The Dodgers got a run in the second off Ray Sebecki, and they lead the Redbirds one to nothing at the end of two behind Stan Williams. Roy McMillan, the hitter, outside and high, one ball and no strikes. In a day game, the Phillies beat the Cubs 12 to two. Hamilton all the way to win. Demeter a grand slammer. Nothing yet on the San Francisco-Houston game. Breaking ball outside, 2-0 oh now on Roy McMillan. Roy has two for two in the game. He had a big hit back in the second inning, a single through the hole in the left field that scored at two runs that drove in Frank Bowling and Del Crandall. Braves lead by the margin of two. Low, ball three, 3-0 three oh now on McMillan. Behind on the count, winds and pitches. Outside, ball four, and he walks McMillan on four pitches. That's the second walk. His previous walk was to Mac Jones. And now we're waiting for pitcher Bob Shaw. What a fielding play he made to rob Al Jackson of a base hit. Al laid down a beautiful drag punt. Looked like he had a base hit easily. And Shaw turned in a tremendous effort to dive, get the ball, and throw from the ground. Just flipped the ball. He was only about four or five strides from first when he finally got it. Bob 0 for 2 has been up twice, struck out twice. He struck out trying to bunt the third strike in the fourth inning. He's around the bunt, pulls the bat back, and it's inside ball one. One ball, no strikes. Cliff Cook in close at third. Swing and a fly ball hit to right center, running for to Sickman to his glove side. He's there and makes the catch. So they took the bunt off and let him swing away, and he hit the ball fairly well to right center field. Two men down in the top half of the sixth inning. Roy McMillan on first. Now the top of the batting order for the first baseman, Tommy Aaron. Tommy 0 for 3. Has been thrown out by Cliff Cook, grounded out to Al Jackson, and reached safely on a fielder's choice. Tommy batting at 240. Right hand hitter, holds the bat straight up and down. Swings the grounder, hit toward the hole. Cook tries to cut it off, knocks it down with his glove. No play available. And everybody is safe. Cliff Cook trying to make the cutoff play, running across the edge of the carpet. Got his glove on it. But was unable to make it stick in his glove, and it'll go as an error to Cliff Cook. Now the Braves have runners on first and second, two down. Their batter is Mike Krisdick, the left fielder. Foul ball wafted back upstairs. It'll be out of play on the upper deck, and the count strike one. Mike has been around the high minors of baseball for a number of years. 
He was at Louisville last season. He's a right-hand hitter. A-R-S-N-I-C-H. Mike Christie. Two runners take a lead. The pitch by Jackson. Just a little bit low. One ball, one strike. Sammy Taylor turns to inquire as to the whereabouts of the last set delivery. Roy McMillan, the lead runner on second. Tommy Aaron on first. And there are two away in the top of the sixth. The Braves in front four to two. Good changeup by Jackson, floating in and over. One ball and two strikes. Beauty of an off-speed pitch thrown by little Al Jackson. Last of 13 children, 27 years old, from Waco, Texas. Mike Krisnick, right-hand batter, bending from the waist, standing well back from the plate. Very slowly, keeps swishing that bat through, waiting on Jackson. It's one and two. Kick of the leg, the pitch thrown. He struck him out, swinging. The breaking pitch by Jackson on the outside corner, and he had Christie lunging on that one. No runs, no hits, one error, and two left on. And at the end of five and a half innings, the score, the Braves four, and the New York Mets two. Now the New York Mets will have the heart of their batting order against Bob Shaw in the last half of the sixth inning. Charlie Neal batting third has been up twice. Charlie has drawn a walk and grounded out third to first. He's 0 for 1. Charlie hitting at 299. Three home runs and 11 RBI. Second and short, playing Neal to hit the ball up the middle as they bunch towards second. A high fly with the left center, not too deep. Coming in is Hank Aaron. He slows up now, settles under it, and makes the catch for the out. One away, nobody on in the home sixth. That'll bring up Frank Thomas. Frank 0 for 2 tonight has been struck out and hit a high pop fly to the third baseman. Bill Crandall working behind the plate, handling veteran right-hander Bob Shaw. Now Shaw winding. Fires the quick one in there for a call strike. He wanted to get that quick first strike. Thomas being a slugger and a bull hitter is usually up there looking for the fastball to hit. But it's never a surprise when particularly the Braves throw him a lot of off-speed stuff, as they have done tonight. Outside and low, one ball and one strike. Warren Spahn will be trying for the 313th victory of his brilliant career in one of the games tomorrow. Either Jack Curtis, a left-hander, or Carl Willey from Cherry Field, Maine, will pitch in the other game against Roger Craig and Bob Moorhead. He runs up bunts, but it goes foul off to the left. Frank went to work hard on his punting technique a few years ago to try and keep that third baseman a little more honest. They always play Thomas, a full hitter, deep behind the bag and guard that line. One ball, two strike count. One out, nobody on. Last of the sixth. Braves four and the Mets two. Shaw over the head. Down comes the arm. A high pop foul hit down the left field line over toward the field boxes. Minky hoping for a play, but it's out of his reach. Into the crowd. And while everybody uh, returns to their positions, it affords us the opportunity to pause for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady, where the sound is always smooth. 810 on your radio dial. Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kiner from the Polo Grounds. One ball and two strikes on Frank Thomas with one out and nobody up. Bob Shaw cranking up. 
Slider off the outside corner. Thomas started after it, then held up in time, and the count is 2 2. Gus Bell on deck, and after that, Marv Thronberry. The Mets have been held at three hits by Bob Shaw. Two of the three were really a long hits a triple by Cook and a home run by Hickman. Another off speed delivery, striding in for the look was Thomas, and then he took it, so it's three and two. They are really throwing Thomas a wide variety of slow breaking stuff. Of course, Frank was with the Braves all last year, and they feel like that if anybody should know how to pitch them, they should. Frank says he isn't concerned about it. Now the 3-2 pitch. He held up, and it's strike three call. But the inside corner, Thomas started after it, then held up. But Benny Smith calls him out. Third strikeout for Bob Shaw, and the hitter will be Gus Bell. Gus over two, hit a line drive to Tommy Aaron at first, in the first, and he popped up to short in the fourth inning. Two outs and nobody on. That's two runs behind. A little bit inside as Bell held up. Cleveland scored four in the last half of the seventh inning. It's now Cleveland seven, the Yankees nothing at the end of seven. Buddy Daly relieved Terry in the sixth inning. Mudcat Grant pitching for Cleveland. A drive in the air to right field. Waiting for it is Mac Jones, and he has it for the out that retires the side. The Mets go down one, two, three in the last half of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. Six innings complete, and the score at the Polo Grounds, the Braves four, and the New York Mets two. Right here, Mac Jones is standing in waiting for the first pitch from Al Jackson. Mac Jones, left-hand batter. He's one for two in a walk tonight. He scored one run. The pitch is on the way and it's swung on as a ground ball pull foul. Down past Andy Papko, the coach at first. On down to the ball boy and it's strike one to Al Jackson. Uh, from Al Jackson to Mac Jones. In the American League at the end of four and a half, the Detroit Tigers lead the Boston Red Sox two to nothing. Don Schwal against Paul Poitak. There's the pitch low to Mac Jones. It's 1-1. Chicago White Sox are at Los Angeles tonight to play the Angels. That one, of course, not yet having begun. Pitch taken inside by Mac Jones. It's two balls and one strike. Milwaukee Braves think very highly of the future of this young fellow. Foul ball. 2-2 two, two now to Jones. In Baltimore, the Washington Senators lead the Baltimore Orioles by a score of 12 to nothing. The end of six and a half innings. The Senators got 11 runs in the top half of the sixth inning. Gene Woodling had a grand slammer to account for four of those 11. That pitch goes high to Mike Jones. The count is out full three and two. Kansas City A's are in Minnesota tonight. That's Fista against Pascual. No score yet. And right here, the Milwaukee Braves lead the New York Mets by a score of 4-2. to two. And here comes the payoff pitch. Mal Jackson to Mac Jones. Swung on and land past Charlie Neal. And rolling on out into right field for a base hit. It handcuffed Neal. He had his hands on it. But that one handcuffed him for fair and rolled on out into right field. Retrieved by Gus Bell and fired back in. It scored as an error. It is not scored as a base hit. He did get his glove on it. He was handcuffed and it is scored as an error on Charlie Neal. So make it uh, Mac Jones on on the error with nobody out. That is the second error of the ball game. Henry Aaron is at the plate. He is one for three tonight. Right hand batter. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Aaron, one of the most relaxed men at the plate in baseball. It's been said by some critics that he could sleep between pitches. But he snaps to attention when he gets time to do business. He weighs only 170 pounds, but has power in all directions. Change of speed, and there's a ground ball to third. Cook has it. He goes to Neal. He's out there. The relay to first. He's out there. Double play. Jackson swung on by Aaron and a ground ball to third 
base. Taken by Cliff. Cook fired on to Charlie Neal, who made the pivot. Coming off on the inside and fired on to Marv Thornberry at first in time to complete the double play on Henry Aaron. And so there are two men out. Nobody on base for the Braves. And Frank Bowling is coming up. He's three for three tonight. Big night for Frank Bowling. Which is low for ball. Bowling a wiry right-hand batter from Mobile, Alabama. He watches in there for a call strike. It's 1-1. One, one. Both starting pitchers are still in the ball game. Bob Shaw for the Milwaukee Braves and Al Jackson. For the New York Mets. As the Braves lead here by a score of 4-2. Let a pitch swung on. Popped up in foul territory. Behind the bag at third. Cliff Cook is there. He takes it to the out. Holding his foul out to first. And the Milwaukee Braves go out. In the top half of the seventh inning with no run. On no hit, one error, and nobody left. And so at the end of six and one half innings to play at the Polo Grounds in New York, the score is the Milwaukee Braves four and the New York Mets two. As we go now to the bottom half of the seventh inning, the New York Mets still trail by two runs, and they're sending up Marv Thornberry, Cliff Cook, and Sammy Taylor. Thornberry has been up twice. Officially only once he drew a walk in the fourth inning. Fouled out to third base in the second. Bob Shaw pumps twice and fires. Has a swing and a miss. The ball pops out of the big glove of Del Crandall. Rolls a few feet out in front of the plate. He retrieves it and fires it on. A strike one count now to Marv Thornberry. He established a reputation for power with the Denver Club and the American Association. Hit the ball tremendous distances with Denver, which is low. He came up very briefly at the end of the season in 1955 with the New York Yankees, later spent two full seasons with the Yankees, was traded to the Kansas City A's in the deal that brought Roger Maris to the Yanks, and last year was traded from Kansas City over to the Baltimore Orioles, was bought this week by the New York Mets in a cash deal from the Orioles. One and one to count out of Thornberry. Swing out a foul ball behind the bag at third. Going over is Dennis Menke waiting, and Menke takes it for the out. So for the second time tonight, Marv Thornberry is fouled out to third. There's one man out, nobody on base, and Cliff Cook is coming up. Cook is one for one in a walk tonight. He had a booming triple here in the third inning. And later scored on Sammy Taylor's sacrifice fly. It was a drive way out in front of the bleacher area in left center field. Henry Aaron got there and did get his hands on the ball, but could not hang on to it. It was scored as a triple for Cliff Cook. Pitcher's in there for a call strike. Cook acquired from the Cincinnati Reds in the deal which sent Don Zimmer from the Mets to the Reds. Low curveball on one hop to the shortstop Roy McMillan across to Tommy Aaron, and he's out. So Cliff Cook has grounded out McMillan to Aaron. Two men out, nobody on, and catcher Sammy Taylor coming up. Taylor's nothing for one officially. He hit into a double play in the bottom half of the fourth inning. Then the sacrifice fight a left in the second inning to score Cook. The Braves scored first tonight, getting three big runs in the top half of the second. Mets came back to get one in the bottom of the second, and the Braves scored again in the top of the third, and the Mets scored in the bottom of the third, and that's the way the scoring stands, four to two. The Mets getting their two runs on Cook's triple and Taylor's sacrifice fly, and a home run by Jim Hickman, his fourth of the season. Now Bob Shaw is into the windup. The pitch swung out and has a ground ball going through and into right field for a base hit. Mac Jones is up with his relay to in, and Sammy Taylor now is on, and Al Jackson, the pitcher, is due up. But there's action in the bullpen of the New York Mets, indicating we may get a pinch hitter with tying run at the plate. Tell you more about that in just a moment. And now coming out is Al Jackson. He's going to bat for himself. Dave Hillman throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets now goes over to sit down. 
Dave Hillman sitting down in the bullpen is manager Casey Stengel. As elected to go with his pitcher Al Jackson, leaving him in the ball game. Out and the runner is first here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. He has been up twice. He flies to right. And he tried to drag a bunt and was out barely at first base in the bottom half of the fifth inning. Jackson still looking for his first base hit of this season. So now he will be looking to get on base any way he can here in the bottom half of the seventh inning. With Jim Hickman now on deck for the Mets. Start of Bob Shaw with a record of two victories and one loss thus far this season. Looking in to get the sign from Del Condo. Sammy Taylor leads it first. The pitch in there on one short hop, fielded by Del Crandall. Crandall, year before last, had the finest season of his major league career all around. Was batted number two in the batting order by manager Charlie Besson. Change from a dead bull hitter and a man who sprayed the ball around and could take it to right field. Had a 294 batting average, his best in the majors. Here's a ground ball, and he's going to shortstop McMillan. Steps on the bag at second for the force, and that's all. Jackson hitting the ball solidly on the ground to shortstop Roy McMillan, who simply kept right on running over to tag the bag and force Sammy Taylor. And so the New York Mets in the bottom half of the seventh inning go out with no runs on one hit, no errors, and one man left. And at the end of seven innings complete at the polo grounds, the score is Milwaukee Braves four and the New York Mets two. Now the Milwaukee Braves are coming up in the top half of the eighth inning and they will bring up Del Crandall, Dennis Menke, and Roy McMillan. Crandall, a right-hand batter who has doubled and singled and hit into a double play. He has driven in three runs. Facing left-hander Al Jackson who started and is still in the ballgame for the New York Mets. Pitch is in there for a call strike. Seven inning totals, the Milwaukee Braves have four runs on nine hits, no errors. The New York Mets have two runs on four hits and have committed two errors tonight. Change of speed, pitches hit, the foul. Off the facade of the roof, about two feet foul on the left field line. The let up pitch and Crandall ripped it. So it is a two-strike count now to Del Crandall. As Al Jackson got hurriedly out in front. Pitch goes high for the ball. That one had Crandall moving out of there a little bit. Fastball hit on the ground to shortstop. Scooped up by Felix Mancier. Across the throne there. Gives him a long stretch and he's out at first base. Randall sliding into the bag there at first. About a half slide. Skidded into it. So Crandall has grounded out short to first. There is one away. And Dennis Menke is coming up. Up to second. Struck out and struck out. Milwaukee Braves and the New York Mets. That swung out on the ground ball, pulled foul. It's strike one to Menke. The Braves brought a record into the ballgame tonight of 12 victories and 14 losses. They are eight and one half games behind the league leading San Francisco Giants. New York Mets brought in a record of five victories and 16 losses. Pitch is outside for ball. Two strike count, one and two. New York Mets earlier today optioned uh, pitcher Bob G. Miller to Syracuse, subject to immediate recall. That's the left hander just acquired this week. Change of speed pitch, cut on and foul off. It's one and two, not a mention. The Mets obtained 
Robert G. Miller from uh, Cincinnati last Sunday in the option mount today. The paid attendance tonight, 15,562. Total attendance, 16,136. You're at the Polo Ground on a warm, comfortable evening. Swing and a miss. Struck him out for the third time tonight. Strike out number seven for Al Jackson. Roy McMillan is coming up. He is two for two in a walk. Has two runs batted in. He has ball one. Roger Craig and Bob Moorhead pitching for the Mets tomorrow against Warren Spawn and either Curtis or Butler. And a little pitch going outside. It's ball two now. To Roy McMillan. Braves got McMillan in December 1960 from Cincinnati in exchange for pitchers Joey Jay and Juan Pizarro. Fastball swung on and fouled off and out of play. Two and one. Of course, Cincinnati dealt Pizarro right on over to the Chicago White Sox, getting Gene Freeze in that deal. And then Joey Jay became a 21-game winner, and Pizarro bloomed into some stardom late in the season with the Chicago White Sox. Pitch is low for ball. Three and one. There was a time, of course, when the Milwaukee Braves were in their heyday of 57, 58, when they were winning National League pennants. Here's the pitch. Swung on and fouled off. When they had a triumvirate of young pitchers, Carl Willie, Joey Jay, and Juan Pizarro, which led people to believe that that pitching staff, led by Lou Burdett and Warren Spahn, would go on forever. But they traded off two of the youngsters to get Roy McMillan. They're counting him right now. Three balls and two strikes. Here's the pitch. Swung on and has a fly ball going foul on the left field line. Up and off the side of the rooftop. Long strike. It's three and two. So it's full count to McMillan. The bespectacled shortstop. Let a pitch swung on and full foul. Fielded by Billy Adair, the coach's third. Whitlow Wyatt, of course, is the pitching coach of the Milwaukee Braves. They keep the pitching coach down here in the bullpen. Jimmy Dykes, of course, on the coaching staff of the Milwaukee Braves, as is Andy Pasco. Al Jackson. Into the windup and the pitch swung on. Foul ball pulled. Off the wall down in the left field corner. Ricochets back on the field. Thrown off by Frank Thomas. So the count holds it three and two to Roy McMillan. He bats number eight in the batting order for the Milwaukee Braves. Manager Charlie Dressen, uh, when the Braves got McMillan, said he figured this would help his pitching considerably. A defensive man like Roy McMillan. Fine glove man. Let up pitches in the dirt and he walked him. That is the third walk issued tonight by Al Jackson. He has walked McMillan twice. And pitcher Bob Shaw is coming up. Struck out, struck out, and fly to center. Hit the ball pretty well on the fly ball to center. The second strikeout was an attempted uh, bunt. That he fouled off on third strike. So left-hander Al Jackson up to work on right-hand batter Bob Shaw. Born in New York City, lives in Garden City. Here's pitch. Swung on. A comebacker to Al Jackson. One of baseball's fine fielders. Starts first in time and he's out. So Bob Shaw grounded out pitcher to first and in the top half of the eighth inning. Milwaukee Braves got no runs on, no hits. No errors and one man left at the end of seven and a half innings of play at the Polo Grounds in New York. The score is the Milwaukee Braves four, the New York Mets two, and now a word from Vice Boy Cigarette. That's 
right, and we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning now with Jim Hickman up to lead off for the New York Mets. Got a home run. He's fourth in the season at the third. Struck out in the first, homered in the third, and walked in the fifth. Here's the pitch. It's outside for ball one to Jim Hickman. Bob Shaw, the right-hander and starter for the Milwaukee Braves. Still in the ball game. The crowd here at the Polo Grounds trying to get something started for the Mets in the bottom half of the eighth inning. And it's an enthusiastic gathering, as it usually is here at the Polo Grounds these days and nights. Shaw winds and fires, and the pitch is low, and in the dirt. Ball two, it's 2-0 and oh now. Jim Hickman. He turns and looks down to Sally Amos, the coach at third. These Milwaukee Braves, men like Crandall especially, who just dug in and out of the dirt, should understand this kind of enthusiasm. It's the same sort of thing that greeted the then Boston Braves when they moved to Milwaukee. The first two years out there, it was enthusiasm personified. That's the fastball in there for a golf strike. It's two and one, and Hickman was taking all the way. Took the two and oh pitch. Felix Mantia is in the on-deck circle now for the New York Mets. Hickman has a batting average of 293. Watches in there.
get the side. Now he has it. He's into the stretcher. Hickman leads at first base. Pitch is on the way. It is in there for a call strike. That ball taken, and it's 1 1. Umpire Benny Smith behind the plate, looking over the baseball. Now Dale Crandall walks out, rubs it up. That one was thrown out. Field hit that Jim Hickman got to open this inning for the Mets was hit number five for the Mets off Bob Shaw tonight. The Milwaukee Braves lead by a score of four to two, and we're in the bottom half of the eighth inning. It is taken in there for call strike two and two. Steps back out of the batter's box now for a moment. Hickman is standing on the bag at first. One man out, and Frank Thomas in the on deck circle. Jack Shaw again in pitching position as Jim Hickman takes his lead at first base. And here's the pitch. Swung on and has a ground ball foul on the third baseline. That will bring Neil back. And as he comes back, in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is your New York Met station in Schenectady, WGY, 810 on your dial. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at the polo ground. Where the New York Mets have one man out of runner at first in the count of two balls and two strikes to Charlie Neal at the plate. With the Braves leading by a score of 4 2. Here's a 2 2 pitch. Swung on, ground ball to third base. Taken by Dennis Minchie. Plays up a second for one. We laid a first in time double play. A hard smash off the bat of Neal. At Dennis Menke at third, he fired it on to Frank Bowling, and he made the pivot inside and fired on to Tommy Aaron in time to complete the double play. And so once again, Bob Shaw is taken out of trouble by a fast double play manipulated by the Milwaukee infield. And in the bottom half of the eighth inning, the New York Mets got no runs on one hit, the infield hit by Hickman, no errors, and nobody left. And so at the end of eight full innings of play at the Polo Grounds, the score is Milwaukee Braves four and the New York Mets two. Now the Braves send up Tommy Aaron. He bluffs the button, takes the pitch low for ball one. Top half of the ninth inning. Both starting pitchers still in the ball game. Al Jackson working for the Mets. His pitch is swung on. It's a ground ball off the chest of Cliff Cook. Runs it down, has no play, drops it again. And on at first base is Tommy Aaron. That one off the chest, and it is scored as an error for Cliff Cook, his second error of the night. And the second error he has committed on balls hit by Tommy Aaron. So the Milwaukee Braves have a two-run lead, and they have a runner at first and nobody out. Mike Kresnick is coming up. He is 0 for 4 for the night. So anticipating the possibility of a sacrifice attempt, third baseman Cliff Cook has moved in even with the grass third. Pitch is in there for a call strike, and he was not bunting on that one. That uh, backs Cook up a step or two at third. Mac Jones is now on deck for the Milwaukee Braves to be followed by Henry Aaron here in the top half of the ninth inning. Now Jackson into the stretch. The pitch is on the way. Tried to punch this one and tipped it off instead, so it goes to strike two. So the bunt sign was not on on the first pitch, but it was on the second. Manager Bertie Tevitz of the Milwaukee Braves, of course, running the club from the dugout. His coach at third is Billy Adair. His coach at first is Andy Pafko. First base, Tommy Aaron takes his lead. The pitch swung on and missed. 
for strike three as Kresnick has struck out for the third time tonight. That is strikeout number eight for Al Jackson. He has struck out eight and walked three. Coming up now, Mac Jones. He is one for three and a walk. He was on on an error by Charlie Neal in the seventh inning. It was a line shot at Neal that handcuffed him. Swing and a foul ball. Out of play. Strike one count to Mac Jones. Mac Jones, one of several fine-looking young ball players that the Milwaukee Braves have. That was in there on one big hop, neatly blocked by catcher Sammy Taylor, who kept it out in front of him. It hit out in front of the plate to put it to. And catcher Sammy Taylor blocked it to prevent any advance by the base runner Tommy Aaron at first. Again, Jackson set to work. Slow curveball that hits the plate and bounds on back and moves uh, Tommy Aaron to second. Taylor runs it down and holding it second now is Tommy Aaron. Two balls and one strike. Pitch comes inside for ball. It's three and one now. Aaron leads at second. Here's the pitch down low and he walked him. So Mike Jones has drawn a base on ball. That is walk number four given up by Al Jackson, who has struck out eight. Gives the Braves runners at first and second with one man out here in the top half of the ninth inning, and Henry Aaron coming up. Hank Aaron tonight, single in the second inning, an infield hit. Fouled out to the catcher in the third, fly to right in the fifth, and hit into a double play in the seventh. Aaron is one for four tonight. Henry Aaron in. Hit down the line and left. Tommy Aaron turns third and is coming home. Frank Thomas takes the ball to third and sliding in there safely is Mac Jones as Henry Aaron goes to second. And another run is in for the Milwaukee Braves who now lead by a score of five to two. Run batted in for Henry Aaron on the drive to left. It is scored as a double. It sent Mac Jones from first to third and brings up Frank Bowling. He's three for four tonight. So now the New York Mets pull the NCL in, hoping for a play at the plate. That comes in on one hop, hitting the front edge of the plate. Jackson has been wild low in this inning. Mac Jones at third and Henry Aaron at second. Pitch misses inside for ball. Two balls and no strikes now to Frank Bowling. He's had two infield hits tonight. Pitch misses outside is ball three. Bowling is reputed to be something of a bat manipulator. And 
and Dave Hillman is now throwing in the bullpen for the New York Mets. Dave Hillman warming up. Three balls and no strikes on bowling, and uh, they're going to put him on. They're going to put bowling on now with first base empty. They're going to take a chance on him. The pitch goes outside, and he has been walked. That is walk number five, given up by Jackson, the first intentional pass. And Del Crandall's coming up now. He doubled the drive and a run, singled the drive and a run, hit into a double play and grounded out. New York Mets now drop the infield back to go for the double play with the bases loaded. There is one man out. The Braves are batting in the top half of the ninth inning, and they lead by a score of 5-2. to two. There's a ground ball. That's fair and on the right field line. One run has scored. Two runs have scored. And turning at third and coming on is Frank Boyd. Now he goes back, and the throw went to second base. The throw went to second base as Crandall is tagged out there, and he is out at second. Bowling took a turn and then went dashing back into the bag at third, so two runs scored. Two men are out. As Crandall trying to uh, make it to second, and Gus Bell fired the ball on. So two runs in to make it a 7-2 to two ball game. As both Mike Jones and Henry Aaron scored, bowling is now at third. Crandall gets credit for two runs batted in. He's batted in four tonight. And up now is right-hand batter Dennis Menke, who is nothing for four. The runner at third and two men out. Pitch is low for a ball. Crandall hit the ball on the ground just inside the bag at first, right down the right field line. Gus Bell had to give it the long run to get over there and got over fielded neatly and fired it on in time to get Crandall in second, but two runs had scored and bowling had moved to third. That's a drive going into left field, dipping in for a base hit. Bowling comes on to score. Frank Thomas relays the ball in and holding it first with a single left and a run batted in is Dennis Menke. As Frank Bowling crossed the plate, That will bring up shortstop Roy McMillan. And it is now 8-2. to two. Milwaukee Braves leading the New York Mets in the top half of the ninth inning. Pitches in there low on one hop. Blocked by Sammy Taylor. in there low on a short out to Taylor. It's ball two. Braves have four runs in here in the top half of the ninth inning. Menke, the base runner at first, takes his lead. Jackson's pitch swung on and has a ground ball. Going to Marv Thornberry at first. He makes the play unassisted to retire the side. As McMillan grounds out to Thornberry unassisted in the top half of the ninth inning, the Milwaukee Braves got four runs on three hits. There was one error and one man left. And so at the end of eight and one half innings of play at the polo grounds, the score is Milwaukee Braves eight and the New York Mets two. Going now to the bottom half of the ninth inning, trailing by a score of 8-2. to two. The New York Mets will send up Frank Thomas, Gus Bell, and Marv Thornberry. Howie Bedell is now playing left field. He's a speedster, a rookie outfielder. Howie Bedell is now playing left field for the Milwaukee Braves. Here's a pitch swung on and fouled off and out of play. Strike one to Frank Thomas. Thomas struck out. Went out to third and struck out. Bob Shaw, the starter, has come all the way for the Milwaukee Braves. That pitch is inside, Thomas. It's 1-1. Don't forget the big doubleheader. The first Saturday afternoon doubleheader of the season. 
tomorrow. First game, 1 p.m. And then a Sunday single game starting at 2 p.m. on Mother's Day. That pitch is low to Thomas. It's two balls and one strike. Mets tonight have a total of five hits off Bob Shaw. Jim Hickman's the only Met to have uh, more than one. Has a broken bat ground ball. At third base, it is taken by Menke. Throws on to first in time, and Thomas is out. Broke the bat, sending the ground ball down to third. Menke firing over the Tommy Aaron at first. So there's one man out, and that brings up left-hand batter Gus Bell. Bell is nothing for three tonight. Marv Thornberry moves into the on-deck circle now. Bob Shaw dips into the windup, and here's the pitch on the way. Inside, ball one. The Milwaukee Braves have two of their big guns in uniform on the bench out of action tonight, Eddie Matthews and Joe Adcock. Matthews has been on the injury list for several days. Pitch is in there for a call strike. And Joe Adcock uh, has had a bout with a cold and still uh, has a severe case of laryngitis. Lou Burdett did not make the trip, was left back in Milwaukee. An ankle injury and a back ailment. One and one, the count now to Gus Bell. Swing and a drive going out to left field for a base hit. On one hop to Howie Vidal, he fires it back in and Gus Bell. Come up with a single to left with one man out. And that brings up Marv Thornberry playing his first game with the New York Mets. He is nothing for two in a walk. Twice he is fouled out behind the back at third. But a man who is known to be able to hit with power. Thornberry digs that back foot in a little bit. As Bob Shaw looks around, Gus Bell takes the lead at first. Tommy Air on the first base when they're making no effort to hold him on. The hit for Bell was number six off Bob Shaw this evening for the New York Mets. As the Braves lead 8-2, bottom half of the ninth inning. Here's one that is going out the center field for a base hit. Bell turns it second, digs for third. Henry Aaron up for the ball, lobs it into second, and Bell pulls up safely at third. On Meyer Thornberry, single up the middle, his first hit of the season. He was 0 for 9 with the Baltimore Orioles, and has just come up with his first hit for the New York Mets. So the Mets now have runners at first and third. One man out. Dell Crandall, the catcher, has called time. He's gone out to the mound to check with pitcher Bob Shaw. Third baseman Cliff Cook is coming up for the Mets. And a triple in the second inning. A long, long ball. Hank Fisher now throwing in the bullpen for the Milwaukee Braves. Curveball hit on the ground towards third. Going through for a base hit. Gus Bell is coming out to score. Thornberry holds it second. Vidal relays the ball in. Holding it first. It's Cook Cook with a single to left and a run batted in. It's now 8-3 to three and catcher Sammy Taylor is coming up to the Mets with one man out. Runners at first and second. And coach Andy Pafko is coming out to the mound for the Milwaukee Braves. And he is motioning out to the bullpen where Hank Fisher has been throwing. So it is beginning to appear that Bob Shaw is not going to get a complete game here. The ball hits solidly on the ground into the hole uh, between short and third going out on the left field. They give the New York Mets their third run of the night. Leave runners at first and second. And Hank Fisher is now taking the long walk in from the bullpen area down in left field. As Coach Andy Pasco, Del Crandall, and pitcher Bob Shaw await his arrival. Andy Papko was saying before the ball game that he has many memories of the Polo Grounds. Of course, this is the first time he has been back here in a number of years. He says his most poignant memory is that of leaning back against the wall 
in left field and watching the ball off the bat of Bobby Thompson sail over his head and in the stands for a home run that gave the 1951 pennant to the New York Giants over the Dodgers. Pafco is the Dodgers left fielder at the time. Well, Bob Shaw is leaving the ball game. Coming on is Hank Fisher. C-H-E-R, Hank Fisher, has a record of one victory and one loss thus far this season for the Milwaukee Braves. This is his ninth appearance. He has uh, appeared exclusively in relief this season. Waiting to face him is Sammy Taylor. Catcher for the New York Mets. Runners are at first and second. Thornberry at second, Cook at first. They should can fire the baseball. win over the Pittsburgh Pirates just yesterday came on in relief and worked one inning which he gave up no runs on one hit but he did get the win yesterday over the Pirates as the Braves came on late uh, to win it before that he had a save against the Pirates his loss was to the Philadelphia Phillies scored 9 to 8 when he worked in one inning and gave up one run on two hits. All right, left-hand batter and catcher, Sammy Taylor. Steps into the batter's box with runners at first and second and one man out. The New York Mets batting in the bottom half for the ninth inning. Pitch is low to Taylor. He had a single in the seventh inning. Ground ball through the hole at the right field for a base hit. He had a sacrifice fly to drive in a run in the second inning. He hit into a double play in the fourth. So he is one for two and a sacrifice fly and a run batted in for the evening. Hank Fisher in relief of Bob Shaw. Here's a ground ball foul on the third baseline off the bat of catcher Sammy Taylor. Fisher into the stretch. 
It's comes inside to Boucher. Boucher has an open stance with that front foot pulled back, and then on the pitch, he kicks it a little and moves right back in there. Boucher has three home runs this season. He takes a call strike. He's in there one left. The fans here at the Polo Grounds are live in the bottom half of the ninth inning of a ball game that is now Milwaukee 8 and the Mets 4. As the Mets have two runs in here in the bottom half of the ninth inning, they have two men on with one man out. Runners leading first and third. This one is popped up to the left side. Shortstop Roy McMillan going back in short left field. Still going, and he makes the catch for the out. Cliff tags, but does not go. Cliff Cook at third. So now there are two men out. And manager Brady Tevich comes out of the dugout and is on his way to the mound. Check with his pitcher, Hank Fisher. Jim Hickman is the batter. Del Crandall, the catcher, is being called out. Boucher popping out. The shortstop, Roy McMillan, in short left field. A shortstop. Roy McMillan is being called in for the conference at the mound. McMillan, Fisher, Crandall, along with manager Bertie Tevitz. While they confer, we'll take this chance to allow our stations to identify themselves. We pause now for station identification. This is Lindsey Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at the Polo Grounds, where the conference at the mound is just breaking up. Del Condon has come back behind the plate, and manager Bertie Tebbett is heading for the dugout once again. The Mets have Cliff Cook at third base, Elio Chacon running for Sammy Taylor at first, and Jim Hickman up. He has a home run and an infield hit to his credit tonight. He is two for three and a walk. Rangy right-hand batter, Hank Fisher, into the stretch. Here's the pitch. Swing and a foul ball back onto the screen and out of place. Strike one counts to Jim Hickman. The Braves eight and the Mets four. Left-hander and a right-hander working in the bullpen. Four of the Milwaukee Braves. Pitcher Hank Fisher in relief of Bob Shaw looking in to get the sign. As the one he wants now. Goes into the stretch. Runners lead. Here's the pitch to Hickman. He takes it high. It's one and one. Jim Hickman just pulling his hands back a little bit and rocking to take that one. Hickman standing relaxed at the plate. Bat on his shoulder waiting for our Fisher. Now, here's the pitch. He takes that inside. It's two and one. Jack Curtis is the left-hander throwing in the bullpen. For the Milwaukee Braves. Don Nottebart is the right-hander. Here's the pitch to Hickman. Swung out as a big hit. Cliff Cook comes out to score. Chacon holds it second as Henry Aaron fires the ball back in. Another run in for the Mets. And it's an 8-5 to five ball game. Runners at first and second. Situation. Tying run out the plate. The batter is Felix Mantia. That run also charged against Bob Shaw. It's the third hit of the night for Jim Hickman. Felix Mantia is one for four tonight. Tying run at the plate. That's trail by three. Runners at first and second. Bottom half of the ninth inning. Hank Fisher is into the stretch position. Here's the pitch to Mantia. Her ball low and outside the ball. Line. There are two men out. Still a left 
left-hander and a right-hander. Curtis and Nadevart working in the bullpen for the Milwaukee Braves. Leading in second is Elio Chacon. At first, Jim Hickman. Speed on the bases. It's to Mancia. is in there. Fastball taken for a call strike one. One one. These enthusiastic Mets Brewers feel very much alive here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. Pitcher again is in the pitching position. Down the way, curveball low and outside. All two and two and one now. Charlie Neal is on deck to be followed by Frank Thomas. In the batting order of the Mets. He has it. He's into the stretch, and here's the pitch. Fastball, and it pops up foul to the right side out of play. Well, the count is two balls and two strikes to Mantia. Mantia, single in the first inning. Popped the second and the third, hit into a double play in the fifth, and flies the left in the eighth. Two two pitch with two men out, two men on. The pitch swung on. It's a ground ball to third. Charging as Minsky throws over to first base. He saves at first base. He is safe at first. The bases are loaded. Henry Tommy Aaron was pulled off the bag, tried to tag Mancia and missed him. And now Aaron arguing on the play. Tevis is on his way to the mound. The Mets have loaded up the bases. The Mets have loaded them up. Here in the bottom half of the ninth inning. So that the tying run, the potential tying runs are on base, and manager Brady Tevis has gone to the bullpen for his right-hander. That would be Don Nottebart. will be coming on now in relief of Hank Fisher. And Charlie Neal will be coming up. Final totals in the summary, but right now the final score, the Milwaukee Blues. 